In a galaxy far, far away, eight custom Star Wars Akedo Warriors were created by a channel called Eddie's World. The Warriors faced off in a no weapons barred anything goes first to two split strikes wins tournament. This is the story of those eight warriors and the one who would be crowned champion. I just found this Mandalorian fake Lego at our local toy store. He came with a jetpack and a blaster rifle. And he even came with Grogu and his futuristic stroller. And if you ask me, this fake Grogu is better than the real Lego Grogu. For this build, we're going to use Pride Heart. And I know we already customized Pride Heart, but look at these guys side by side. They are so similar. I could almost use Pride Heart's head because it looks just like the Mandalorian's helmet. And Pride Heart's pauldrons can be easily transformed into Beskar shoulder armor. Not to mention, we have a bunch of extra Pride Hearts. Daddy, play Fortnite with us! Wait for me! Boys, don't start without me, I'll be right there! What is going on here? Was somebody playing with my Legos? Somebody built the Mandalorian? Whoa, this guy is cool. He's even got a rustic looking cape. And this weapon. Is that a Beskar spear? And the way he's holding it. How did his arms get like that? I gotta test this guy out.
In today's video, we'll be turning Thunderwind into Kylo Ren, and the Force was definitely with us on this build because it came out totally amazing. And it's the second of eight Star Wars customizations we're doing. So if you have a Star Wars character you want to see us build, let us know in the comment section. And after we complete all eight warriors, we'll have a Star Wars themed tournament. So make sure you guys subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of the action. And without further ado, let's jump right in. The material list for this build include one Thunderwind, one Lego Kylo Ren, one plastic Lego cape, one pre-wired LED Lego lightsaber, and some black fabric. And while we're at it, here's a list of the tools I'll be using and everything I use, including some of the Akato Warriors are linked in the description. And by clicking on the links, you'll be helping out our channel. So thank you in advance. Look at this comparison of Thunderwind next to the LEGO Kylo Ren. We're so lucky that LEGO and Akato are about the same scale because it means that we can use Kylo Ren's helmet without any modifications and it's even painted better than I could ever dream of. Okay, first things first, let's remove his weapon with a pair of pliers and even though this might seem like a simple task, you still want to be real careful while doing this because you can easily take his arm off by accident. And next, we'll remove his head with our trim shears and again, you want to be really careful because his neck is also fragile and probably the most important part of your warrior. Now that we have them stripped down, let's take a look at my list of must-haves for this build. Our custom Kylo Ren must have a realistic helmet and I think we can check that one off. He must have a rigid cape, a fabric hood, awesome paint, and last, he must have a light up saber. That's right, his lightsaber must light up. I told you guys it was gonna be awesome. While firmly holding the Lego head in the pliers, I'm going to carefully drill out the hole so that it can fit on its new base. And as you can see here, it's a perfect fit. To fasten the head onto the neck, I fill the cavity half full with my 3D pen, then very quickly I press the head onto the neck. A test fit of the helmet tells me that we are moving in the right direction. Now, let's grind down these loose and baggy looking sleeves because they're not the look we're going for. To do this, I'm using my cordless Dremel with a couple different sanding bits. I'm also going to smooth out his upper body because later I'll be painting a pattern on it and I want a nice flat surface to work with. This is the LED Lego lightsaber we purchased on eBay and it makes Kylo's lightsaber look like the real thing. But in order to get the lightsaber to fit, we're going to have to drill out the hand. This part was very difficult because I'm sure you all know how fragile this arm is. In fact, this guy's arm actually fell off while I was drilling on it, so I had to stop to reattach it. I also had to do a lot of testing and measuring to make sure the lightsaber was positioned correctly to get the split strike. But after all that work, I can finally cross off another must have. I'm now ready to attach the cape. But first, let's put a coat of black primer on Kylo because once the cape is on, it's going to make painting his back almost impossible. Wow, what a difference the paint makes. And the airbrush does such an awesome job getting the paint on quickly and evenly. But we're not finished yet. I still have to figure out how to make this cape work. My plan is to cut the cape right down the middle and hopefully that will still allow the figure to be split. I'm just test fitting these pieces so I'm only applying a small amount of super glue on the cape 
and if it works, I'll have to take it off and glue it on permanently. The left side of the cape was pretty easy, but for this right side, I'm gonna have to cut a small piece off so that his head can still swivel back. This was so amazing to see and such a relief. He doesn't split as far as he used to because the cape is so long it stops him at a certain point. But it's obvious that he is split and I think it looks 100 times better than a fabric cape. This is just groundbreaking technology right here. Another check for the list. Now let's finish this paint job. I'm gonna prime the cape, then apply two coats of pure black to the entire figure. And now is the hard part. I wanna try to recreate the pattern on Kylo Ren's tunic. So I'm gonna use a gunmetal color and very carefully make horizontal and vertical lines to create squares. I think the paint turned out awesome and I'm gonna put another check on our list. And that leaves just one last thing to do. We need to give Kylo Ren a fabric hood. I have one all made up here. We just need to glue it on and trim it down a little. And check this out guys. Here is our finished custom Kylo Ren. We have everything checked off of our must-have list and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I'm gonna see if we can get away without gluing the helmet on because I think it would be nice if we can switch between hood and no hood. Doesn't he look amazing fighting in the dark? How awesome would a Sith Lord and Jedi Championship fight be? Initiate cloning program. Scroll through head covering options. That is a cowboy head computer. Computer that is a monkey. He will need hair. Hair for a man. Brown colored hair. No that is not it. Anything longer? Nope. No. I do not think this is the right program. Computer show me Bay Cicada Warrior Thunderwind. This just might work with minimum modifications. Add road option and reset color scale. Initiate pigmentation sequence. It is perfect. Bring up weapons program. Specifically Jedi weapons. We do not have time. Print the clone. It is too late computer.
we have failed. Started with the Mandalorian. Next was Kylo Ren with and without Hood. Then we made Obi Wan Kenobi. Today we attempt to turn the training figure and Mizuchi into Supreme Leader Snoke and his elite Praetorian Guards. Can we pull it off or will we crash and burn? I bought this Snoke figure on eBay and although it's way bigger than a Nakato, his head is a little too small and it just doesn't look right on a Nakato warrior. I also did some research and I couldn't find anything about Snoke being able to handle a lightsaber or any other weapon for that matter. So it seems like he was destined to be our training figure. And here are the two elite Praetorian guards I also bought on eBay. Each one has a different style helmet and they both came with cool shoulder pads that I'm going to try to put on our figure. This is the bag of weapons they came with, and I have no idea how to put it together, but it doesn't matter because I'm not planning on using it. Let's go get the figures we'll be using for this customization. These are all our doubles, and even though we have a lot of extra warriors, we are running dangerously low on controllers, so I probably won't be customizing controllers for a while, at least until I can find some more single packs. So we'll turn Mizuchi into the Praetorian Guards, and will make Snoke into a training figure. It's hard to believe, but this will be our first custom training figure, but definitely not our last. The results exceeded all my expectations, and it's honestly so much fun to hit. You guys gotta watch to the end to see how this turns out. You won't be disappointed. Mizuchi's weapon really looks like something you'd see an elite Praetorian guard using, so I'm going to remove these very delicately because I just might end up using them. Although at this point, I have no idea what I'm doing as far as weapons go. In order to do this, just use some cloth or cardboard to protect the weapon from the teeth of the pliers, and without squeezing too hard, wiggle the weapon back and forth while gently pulling up until it pops out. Oh, and by the way, you can find all the tools and materials I use linked in the description and by clicking on them, you'll be helping out our channel. These are my trim shears and they are by far the easiest way to remove an Akato figure's head. After cutting the top off, you'll be left with this lower ring that is glued to the base of the head. Any damage to the base will cause serious problems, so I like to use two pliers to get the ring off. Now we need to make the hole in the bottom of our Lego head a little bigger so that it will slip nicely onto our Akato figure. The main thing is that you hold the head securely with your hand out of harm's way. These two heads are ready to go. Check these guys out. Which one is your favorite? I kind of like the one with the visor, but you know what? 
I like them both. If you guys like them so far, make sure you hit that like button. They're looking really good at this point, but they'll look a lot better with their shoulder pads on. I'll just cut them off, then glue them on. Once they're all dry, I'm going to grind down these sleeves using my cordless Dremel. And now we are ready for paint. The airbrush makes this process so fast and easy and the results are unbeatable. We're using acrylic paints so we first have to put down a coat of white primer. I'll leave them out in the sun for a couple hours then spray them with red. And if you think they look good now, wait until we get the gloss clear coat on. But first, we need to paint his pants black. Make sure you have some fine tip paint brushes for this part because it'll make the job a lot easier. If you have a steady hand, that helps too. I've been looking at a lot of pictures of the Praetorian Guards and I've seen them with a weapon that looks exactly like Mizuchi's but some of them have a blade that is way bigger so I'm gonna combine these two weapons and hopefully it will not only look good but also strike good. The first thing I want to do is sand some of this tip off because it's a little too sharp for me. Next we'll cut both weapons exactly where we want to join them. And you can't just glue these two pieces together because it probably will break at some point. To make the weapon strong and durable, we'll drill small holes on either side and glue them together with a nail in between. Oh yeah, that looks good, but we're not done yet. I really want to extend his robe down to his feet and I have an idea. I'm going to use this card holder to mimic his robe flaps. It takes a while to get the fit right, but once I get this first one, I can use it as a template to make the rest. We'll prime these robe bottoms along with the glaives. Then paint the robes red while painting the glaives steel. Here they are all dry and ready for the next step. I'm just going to super glue these robe pieces on and the trick is to use as little glue as possible and to apply pressure for at least 30 seconds to get a tight bond. I was really surprised at how nice and seamless the robes turned out. And now, they really look like Praetorian Guards. Now that the guards are finished, we'll let them dry while we work on Supreme Leader Snoke. My first thoughts were to put Snoke's head on the training figure, but I really don't like the way the trainer was made because there's nothing but friction keeping his head from falling back and getting split. I also wanted this to look like an actual figure with arms instead of just a torso. So I think I'll use the top half of our Snoke figure and the bottom half of our training figure. I discovered that I could remove one section of his arm, making him look a little more proportional. Instead of having our new trainer split, I'm just gonna make his head removable. In order to accomplish this, I'm going to use these tiny magnets. I had bought these in hopes of being able to use them for a project and today is the day. So when you hit this guy just right, instead of a split strike, 
you'll knock his head off. And resetting him is probably easier than the original. I really didn't want to destroy our one and only training figure for just his suction cup, but I didn't have time to go out and look for one. And plus it's for the video. I'll definitely go out and find these suction cups for next time. We honestly got super lucky with this figure because when I bought it, I was just planning on using his head, but we were actually able to use most of him, including his collar, robe, and belt. He turned out so awesome and he is so much fun. Even if you don't knock his head off, it'll twist it around in some really funny positions. The Praetorian Guards look amazing as well, and the first thing you notice is that huge shiny blade. Although I made two guards, only one will be entered in our tournament, making this our fourth of eight Star Wars figures. Unfortunately, we ran out of time and I wasn't able to test the guards out. In today's video, we drill, saw, and cut our way through another Battle Giant customization. But when the dust clears, will the build fall short of expectations or will we reach the tippity top of a Kato customizing greatness? Hi guys, welcome back to the Eddie's World Workshop. Before we begin, let's do a recap. Currently, we're making custom Star Wars themed Akato Warriors. First, we made the Mandalorian. Next was Kylo Ren. Then we made Obi-Wan Kenobi. Last week, we made Supreme Leader Snoke with Praetorian Guards. Today, I'm going to be making a custom General Grievous Akato Warrior. Scratchatron was born to be General Grievous. He's got four arms, droid feet, and he towers over the competition. The problem when it comes to customizing battle giants is the limitations their armor present. There are three points of contact that all giants armor must maintain. The first is in the front, covering the split strike button. This point ensures that the armor can be hit and properly ejected. The second is in the back. It's a small hole that keeps the armor locked in place. The third point is by far the most limiting because it sits right on the top of the figure's head. In this hole is a spring that causes that explosion we all know and love. So I have a vision of how I want this customization to look, but I have no idea how to achieve it or if it's even possible. But like I always do, I'm just gonna get to work and I'll let the answers come to me. The head I'm using for this build is from a PlaySchool General Grievous figure I bought on eBay. And whoever designed this toy should probably be working for NASA because it was built a little too well. Holy smokes, houses are easier to take apart than this. Now that we have the head off, We'll drill a large hole in the bottom so it can sit nicely on its new base. I'm also going to remove his hands and replace them with ones that can hold weapons. That's right, he'll be getting four lightsabers. The very lightsabers he took off of Fallen Jedi and was taught to use by Count Dooku. Okay, hold on, stop everything. I think I just had an idea. I want to reshape the armor into the general's cloak. So I'm going to cut out most of the top because it doesn't fit on his new head anyways. But I'll leave that little key on the top connected to the armor by a little piece in the back. Hopefully it'll be strong enough to perform its task. I'm marking out all the cuts with this black sharpie so I don't make any mistakes because these battle giants are like a Kato gold. Because the new head sits much higher than the original, I also need to cut a path for the key to sit in. 
Now that everything is cut out, the moment we've all been waiting for, the hit test. Oh my goodness, it works. This is just an amazing moment because it increases the possibilities of all future Battle Giant builds. Now that we know we can make the cloak work, we need to buy fabric. So let's take a quick trip to our local Walmart. Okay, we're back with the fabric and look what else we found. 26 Series 1 single packs. We'll open those later. Now let's decide how to configure these new hands. I think I prefer the lightsaber to be pointing forward like this, but I quickly realize that they'll never stay in this position unless the bottom hand is much heavier than the top. To achieve this, I'm going to use magnets to connect the bottom hand. This will accomplish two things. The first is that it will produce enough weight to keep the hands in the resting position we're trying to achieve. The second is that it will allow for one hand on each side to be knocked off, providing for a little extra action. And now we are finally ready for paint. Now that everything is painted, let me throw this cloak on so we can do the reveal. Here is our custom General Grievous Akato Warrior. What do you guys think? I absolutely love him. He comes with his ejectable cloak armor, four lightsabers, and two removable hands. but hold on right there. Let's make sure this new armor mounting technique functions correctly. And there you see it, it works perfectly. So now we have our fifth of eight Star Wars themed warriors. Three more and we'll have our Star Wars Akato tournament. Who's your favorite to win it all so far? In today's video, we attempt to make the scariest looking Sith figure ever, the one and only Darth Maul. Make sure you watch to the end to see how this turns out because I have a new favorite and I think you will too. We are in the process of making eight Star Wars themed figures for a Star Wars tournament. Here's a review of who we made so far. The Mandalorian, Kylo Ren, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Praetorian Guards with Snoke training figure, and Battle Giant General Grievous. Okay, now that you're caught up, let's get back to the workshop. For this build, I'll be using another play school figure I found on eBay. We got really lucky finding this Darth Maul play school figure because the head is pretty accurate and actually looks a lot like the character. The same can't be said for all PlaySchool Star Wars figures. <coughs> Episode 1 The Phantom Menace was the Star Wars I grew up with as a kid and I must have watched that movie a hundred times. I can clearly remember Darth Maul being a very agile and acrobatic warrior. In the final fight with Obi-Wan and Gwygon, he was jump kicking them left and right. So I'm gonna make Darth Maul a kicker. I also saw a picture of Darth Maul's tattoos on his chest and I thought that it looked too cool to keep covered up. Let's go to the corkboard and I'll show you guys. Here's where the inspiration for this project comes from. Look at this shot I got from the Phantom Menace. I think Badfoot is perfect for this project. This pic is what I want our Darth Maul to look like. Long outgrown horns, the upper body tattoos, shoulder high black gloves, and puffy pants. 
The first thing we have to do is remove Darth Maul's head. And as we know from our General Grievous build, in which we also use the play school figure, these heads are not made to be removed. There is no possible way you can pull this head off. So we're gonna make a small incision in the back of his head. Now we can separate it enough to get it over this plug and off it comes. Akedo Warrior heads are a lot easier to come off, probably because we've done it a couple dozen times already. Now we have to drill a larger hole in the bottom of our new head so that it will properly fit on an Akedo neck. The key to doing this safely is making sure that you have the head secured firmly with your hand out of harm's way. And don't try to drill the hole out with one drill bit. Slowly step up the size of the bits by making several passes. To keep the figure looking proportional, I want to fix the head in a higher position. This means that the neck will be fully exposed and to make it look more realistic, we need to shave that bottom ring off. My cordless Dremel with sanding bit are the perfect tool for the job. I use a half round file to clean up the areas near the body and finally some 240 grit sandpaper to smooth it out. That looks a lot better. You guys know we can't make a Darth Maul figure without his iconic double bladed lightsaber. I had ordered one on Etsy a long time ago, but I can't seem to remember where I put it. But luckily, while I was looking for new horns for Darth Maul, I made an amazing discovery. Darth Maul's double bladed lightsaber, oh yeah, look at that. I can't wait to see this thing in action. Let's make him holding his lightsaber the same way Captain Plunderfoot is holding his sword. In order to accomplish this, we need to do a hand swap. Our hand donor will be this local grande I found in the parts jar. I don't even know why he's that color. Was I trying to turn him into Hulk Hogan or something? To remove Badfoot's hand, I'm going to use a coping saw to cut it away from his shoulder. Then I can use the trim shears to finish the cut. Next, we need to enlarge the hole so the lightsaber can slide in. This is the exact same technique I used to drill out the head. Before we glue the hand on, I just want to make sure that the lightsaber is in the right position. I always use a battle giant to align the weapon because if your warrior can't hit a battle giant's button, you're in trouble. Everything looks like it's gonna line up, so I super glue the hand on. Something still doesn't look right about the figure, and I think it's because of his scrawny legs. So I'm going to use some vinyl patch to add some bulk to his bottom half. I like to use this stuff because it's easy to apply and even easier to sand. After applying it, I try to shape it the best I can so there's less sanding to do later. The only downside is that this stuff takes a long time to dry, so we'll leave it in front of the fan overnight and hopefully it'll be ready to sand tomorrow morning. It's morning and Darth Maul's pants are completely hardened and ready for sanding. And like I said earlier, the vinyl patch is very easy to sand. He looks a lot better in his MC Hammer pants, so now it's time to fix another issue. Darth Maul's horns. Right now his horns are looking more like bumps that he should go see a doctor about. Let's make them a little more menacing. We'll replace them with these six Lego claw pieces. The tricky part is cutting each horn at the right length and angle, but don't worry about getting it perfect because after the super glue dries, we'll do some additional shaping in which we can make up for any imperfections. I can see the potential. Let's put this on the side to dry. I've decided to use some of the leftover plastic we have from the Praetorian Guard customization to create a similar effect. I really don't know what you would call this, but in some pictures I've seen, it appears as if he's wearing the bottom half of his robe, even though he's not wearing the top half. 
Recreating this look with the plastic is really fun and easy. I'm going to sand and glue these pieces on prior to painting unlike the Praetorian Guard build. Hopefully I can reach everything with my airbrush. Now I'm really happy with the way it's looking and I'm all ready to paint, but I totally forgot to sand down the lumpy patches of fur on Badfoot's shoulders, arms, and back. Anytime I do sanding on the figure, I like to use a stiff toothbrush and some solvent to get everything smooth and clean again. I'm getting a little nervous at this point because I know how difficult it's gonna be to get all of Darth Maul's tattoos painted on. But we've come too far to even think about failing. So let's bust out the airbrush. Now that the black base coat is all dry, let's attempt to paint Darth Maul's chest tattoos. Here are some tips when you're doing fine detailed paint jobs. 1. Brace your hands against as many things as possible. Use the table, figure, and even your other hand. 2. Get a good fine paintbrush. 3. Break down the design into basic lines, shapes, or letters, and focus on one line at a time. Halfway through the chest tats and I think it looks pretty good. Make sure you stick around for the final reveal. Maw's horns need more reshaping and the easiest way to do this is with a razor blade. Make sure you don't attempt this at home, it's very dangerous. With every cut it gives the horns a unique and organic look. Now this looks 100 times better and we're ready to paint. Even though Maul's head was completely painted, I knew from the beginning that I wanted to repaint it. Just so all the colors matched and also so I could make some of the lines crispier. But having the design to go off of was really a lifesaver. And with everything painted and his head glued on, let's give him one thick layer of gloss clear coat. This will make him nice and shiny 
and it will also protect his paint from maces, swords, bats, hammers, cats, lightsabers, claws, and marbles, hopefully. And here is the finished product. I think this might be my new favorite. I can't test them out just yet, however, because I wanna let the paint and glue dry a little more and I don't want him to get damaged before our Star Wars theme tournament that we are only two more warriors away from completing. I know you guys really want Luke Skywalker and I found an awesome Luke Skywalker head on eBay but I really doubt it's going to come in on time, so I might just have to go with what I can get and what I have at this point, and I'll come back to those iconic figures you guys are asking for later. Thank you all so much for watching to the end. I really appreciate it. Our channel just hit 20,000 subscribers, which is just unbelievable. Thank you to everyone for subscribing. Thank you for all the views, likes, comments, emails, and all the positivity and support. I couldn't do this without you guys. And when positive comments pop up on my phone, it's just fuel for the fire. There are times when I'm literally about to quit and a comment will pop up and it gives me everything I need to go on. It means so much to me. So thank you again. Thank you all so, so much. This is Lego set number 75280, the 501st Legion Clone Troopers. All I really need from this set are the Clone Troopers, but I just can't help myself. I must build. And while I'm building, here's a quick recap of our Star Wars figures so far. Nothing will stand in our way. There's been an awakening. Sith Lords are our speciality. I've been trained in your Jedi arts. At last we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last we will have revenge. This is the way. And that catches us up to today's video Episode 7, The Clones. I'm really impressed with this set and for the price, I think it was a really good deal. Most importantly, these clone helmets are really detailed and I think they're going to look great on an Akito warrior. Here's a breakdown of all the figures we'll need for this build. Three shutdowns, three hyperlocks, and three Lego clone troopers. Let's remove the head, helmet, and blaster from the Lego Clone Trooper. We'll twist off Shutdown's punching arm and for Hyperlock, we'll saw off his right arm and remove his head. That leaves us with three bodies, three punching arms, three Clone Trooper helmets, and three blasters. To prepare the Akedo neck for its new head, start by sanding off the bottom ring. Next, drill out a quarter inch hole in the Lego head while holding it firmly with a trigger clamp. Now the head will slip right onto its new body. If you don't plan on painting the head, leave it off for now. Prepare the body and new arm by making sure both sides are flat and clean. Super glue alone is enough to hold both sides together. Using a battle giant as reference, align the extended fist with the giant's split strike button and hold the two parts together for at least 30 seconds. Use a clamp if possible. Shutdown has to be the most fragile of all the Series 1 Warriors. This is the second time I've had his arm break in the exact same spot. I don't have any more shutdowns to use, so we'll have to repair him. I drilled two small holes in both his shoulder and his arm, and I'm going to use a pin to hold the two pieces together along with some super glue. Now he's stronger than ever. Before we move on, I'm going to run a bead of super glue around the joint of his arm and body. And I'm also going to run a bead of super glue around the weak spot on his arm. 
Now we're ready for paint. These days, I always use my airbrush to get the base color on the figure. I start by spraying the inside first and then the outside. And after everything is painted, I like to spray the inside with a coat of high gloss clear coat. I do this to make sure the two sides don't stick together when closed. The white on the helmet is a little different from the white I used for the body and it looks really off. So I'm just going to put a coat of the body white on the helmet. I'm also repeating this process for the blue I plan on using for the body armor. Having the pattern to trace over is really a lifesaver. Painting every single detail from a real stormtrooper onto this Akato figure would be very difficult and it could clutter up the small spaces we have to work with. So I'm just trying to get two to three of the more recognizable features painted on. It's really up to you how detailed you want to make your figure, but sometimes less is more. And here they are, the 501st Legion Clone Troopers. They look good, but do they fight good? I want to battle him against some special hand-picked warriors, because if this clone trooper can't pass his battle test, then he's not leaving this facility. Most impressive. When I found you, I saw raw, untamed power. Join me, and together we can rule the galaxy. And there you have it. He passed with flying colors and is approved for all combat. In today's video, we'll be making our eighth custom Star Wars Akato Warrior, the last entrant to our Star Wars themed Akato tournament. And who will we be making, you ask? None other than the chosen one himself, Darth Vader. Hi everyone, we're back in the Eddie's World workshop today, wrapping up our custom Star Wars Warriors. Now that doesn't mean we're done with Star Wars, but it does mean that we'll be getting around to doing other themes. Getting back to our build, let's turn Glitch Blade into Darth Vader. I bought this Imaginext next figure for his head, but looking at it now, it might be too big. We're gonna cut it off and try it on anyways. And if it doesn't look good, we have this Lego Darth Vader minifigure to fall back on. The Imaginex figure's head needs to be cut and pried off. I think we can use this cape too, so let's put it on the side. Now, let's prep Glitch Blade by removing both his weapons and his head. The tool I'm using here is called a trim shear, and there's a link for it and all the tools I use in the description below. Okay, let's see what the Imaginex Vader head looks like on Glitch Blade. Looks like we're going with the Lego head, guys.
We're gonna sand down this neck like we always do, and this will allow the Lego head to have a nice snug fit. The cordless Dremel with sanding bit make this step quick and painless. Darth Vader's Lego helmet is actually two pieces, so I'm going to glue the bottom piece to his head in preparation of drilling out a larger hole. And for this build, I want to see if we can get away with leaving the top section of Vader's helmet loose so that it can be removed, revealing a scarred up Anakin Skywalker. With the head secured in a trigger clamp, I carefully drill out a larger hole to fit our Akato figure's neck. The Lego Darth Vader I have is actually Fago, and it came with a really cool chest piece that an authentic Lego Darth Vader wouldn't have. I want to use some of these details on our Akato Darth Vader, so I'm just going to cut off all the parts I need with my trim shears. After I smooth down all the cuts, I'll put these pieces on the side to glue on after we paint. Rather than using a plastic Lego cape like I did with Kylo Ren and Obi-Wan, I want to try to use this cape that came with our Imaginext Vader. fader. And after a bunch of cutting and confusion, this is what I came up with. I think it will serve its purpose without interfering with the mechanics of the figure. And finally, we're on to painting. All the paints I use nowadays are water-based, so it's important to prime everything like I'm doing here. I gave our Darth Vader one coat of black primer and one coat of pure black, and I think it's just about ready to receive some upgrades. Prior to gluing any new pieces on the upper body, we need to cut them in half so that the figure can still be split in two. And before anyone says anything in the comments, I know my fingers are all messed up, I got paint and glue stuck to every fingernail, cuts on every knuckle, and dry skin for days. And let me just say this, at 100,000 subs, I'll get a manicure and vlog it, okay? These details from the chest piece really add a lot to our Darth Vader warrior, and the best part about them is that they come fully painted. What do you guys think of it so far? Let me know in the comments section who's your favorite Star Wars Akato Warrior and your pick to win the tournament. I almost forgot to put Darth Vader's light up lightsaber on and I hate having to drill through his hand at this point but we have no choice. Once the lightsaber is in and correctly positioned, I'll fill in the hole with my 3D pen and do some touch-up paint. With everything painted and dry, I'm going to tape off the gold base so we can spray on a couple coats of clear gloss polyurethane. And here is the finished product, the last entrant to our Star Wars tournament, the chosen one, Darth Vader. Our very next video will be our first themed custom tournament. With the help of Eddie and Clark, we will crown a Star Wars champion. First to two wins, ready? Fight, split strike. He lost both arms. He lost his armor. He lost his armor. Here we go. At the top of the glass on a roll. And it's time to run it up, yeah, you know. Maxed out, put the pedal to the floor.
Okay, we're here with Clarky and Dougie. And it sounds like Eddie is coming. <laughs> and we are here to film the first ever themed custom Akedo tournament, Star Wars edition. You guys haven't really seen a lot of these, so let me introduce the starting lineup. First, we have the Mandalorian. He was our giveaway figure. Next, we have Kylo Ren with light up cross guard lightsaber. Next, I did Obi-Wan Kenobi with light up lightsaber. And then we have General. our giant General Grievous. Guys, did I show you this? Yeah, I saw it. It's super cool. His bottom arms are magnetic, so try pull it off. And guys, See, so in battle, he can lose an arm. He's Supreme Leader Snoke, our first ever training Wait, figure. Yeah. And then also, we made two cool. Praetorian guards. We're gonna give one away during Christmas. You can yeah. choose which helmet you want if you win the giveaway. We have this one. I like this one. I, I like this one. You like that one? I like that one too at first, but then I kind of like this one now. Why are they just all red? That's the way they are. And then we have our clone trooper. I like that guy, the clone he is our second giveaway figure. Then we have Darth Maul. And our last figure, we just made Darth Vader. Now, guys, sad news about our Darth Vader. For some reason, his lightsaber don't light up anymore. No. I know, right? No. I know. Okay, so guys, the boys just noticed this. This guy. Kylo, I made his helmet removable because we can go from hooded mask to the non-hooded mask. Aww. And even with our Darth Vader watch, you can take off his helmet. And he has a really scarred up head. Okay guys, for our first matchup in round one, we have the Praetorian Guard versus General Grievous. First the two is the winner. Ready? Fight! Split strike! Okay. It's 1-0 Grievous. Put your arm back on. So that's... That oh. Yeah, your guy got split. Okay, ready? Fight! Split strike! Oh! General Grievous moves on to round two. How perfect is this fight? Darth Maul versus Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now these two fought These two fought in the movies and Obi-Wan cut Darth Maul in half. Hold on, I want to do a light up lightsaber yeah. duel. Yo. Oh yeah. Okay, hold on boys. That's wait, wait. So cool. Ready fight split strike. <laughs> like a lightsaber to the back of the head. Oh! No. Oh! oh my gosh, the lightsaber was bent. This is broken. Ready, fight, split strike. Okay. Oh! Nice job. Darth Maul won that one. He will be moving on to the next round. Darth Vader versus the Mandalorian. Ready, fight, split strike. Oh! <laughs> Ready, fight, split strike. Oh, I can't even reach it. Oh, dude, the man. I think he's gonna win. The mandal. I know his spear is just yeah, too bet. strong. Oh, my God. You put it on the Mandalorian. I bet, well, I bet 10 <laughs> okay, the Mandalorian I just bet, took out Darth Vader. Guys, actually, I'm Kylo Ren with his hooded helmet, right, Eddie? That's yep. when you like. Hooded. Versus the clone trooper. Okay, ready? Fight, split oh, strike. Wait, your lights are beeping. No, his his lightsaber does that for some reason. Yeah. 
Okay, Kylo's winning 1-0. Ready, fight, split strike. Oh! That is an upset of the century. Okay, moving on. Our first fight of the second round is General Grievous versus Darth Maul. Who's going to be who? Darth Maul. You want to be Darth Maul? Okay. I'm General. Okay, guys. The winner of this goes to the championship fight. First of two wins. Ready? Fight. Split strike. Oh, oh he blanked. He blanked. Oh, Grievous is down to two lightsabers. Wait, wait. Oh. Oi. 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 Okay, guys, something bad happened. Yeah, these lightsabers are very brittle. Darth Maul's lightsaber just broke. Like That's an instant disqualification. General Grievous moves on to the championship. That is not a surprise to me. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, it is Kylo versus the Mandalorian. The winner of this fight battles General Grievous for the championship. Ready, fight, split strike. It's 1-0 Mandalorian leading on his way to the championship match versus General Grievous. Ready? Fight. Fight. Split strike. Oh! Okay, no surprises here, people. Okay guys, this is the championship fight. The Mandalorian versus General Grievous. First ever Star Wars champion being crowned right here. Ready, fight, split strike. Oh, Grievous lost. Did he lose both arms? He lost both arms. He lost his armor. He lost his armor. Get him, get him Mandalorian. Okay guys, it's 1-0. We're one win away from crowning our champion. Can General Grievous make a comeback? Ready? Fight? Split strike! Oh my gosh, he looks... Okay guys, since we have a winner, let's go to the candy store!
No. <laughs> Like, quiet, but, you know, I'm just trying to, just to boil the one.